idea. Um, but uh, I'll call to order uh, this meeting of the Judicial Council of Georgia. Um, we are delighted to have uh, you here in this building. As I've gone around and talked, I know it's, for many of you, it's your first opportunity to see this beautiful building, which we often call a real symbol of the importance of the rule of law in the judicial branch of our state. Uh, as Chief Justice Melton liked to say, we are um, in a great position. You'll see later the views out of the Capitol. We are um, slightly below um, and, and a proper distance um, from the legislative and executive branches. Um, but uh, it, it really is, uh, we wanted to do this and had planned to do this. Um, I know Chief Justice Melton was planning to do this as the building opened in February um, of 2020 and then we got distracted by some things and um, but we're very glad to have the opportunity to have you here today. Um, if you're a, I'll give you some housekeeping reminders. If you're a guest today, please uh, make sure you either, s wow, that's very, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we can get the lights up a little bit. Um, if you're a guest at the meeting, please make sure you either signed in at the table out front um, or email us so that we get a record of, of uh, your presence for the meetings. That's better. Um, the meeting is being recorded and it's open to the public and the press. Um, and uh, be aware these microphones are very sensitive. So um, sometimes people lean over and talk to their colleagues at points during meetings, not always in the nicest way. Um, so you might want to be a little careful about that. Um, if you are talking for purposes of a meeting, you shouldn't need to move a microphone in front of you. It should pick um, up what you say as long as you speak fairly loudly. Um, for voting items, we are going to generally just ask for opposition um, so we get a better read and a smoother process. Um, we have a few members who are uh, unable to attend and have designees here. Uh, Presiding Justice Boggs uh, had a conflict, but uh, his designee, uh, Justice Nels Peterson, who will soon be our presiding justice, uh, is here. Judge Alvin Wong, uh, the president of the Council of State Court Judges, was not able to be here. His designee, Judge Jeff Hansen, uh, is here. And Judge Sean Rhodes, the president-elect of the Council of Probate Court Judges, was unable to be here, but has a des as his designee, Judge uh, Danielle McRae. I also want to welcome a few special guests. We have Judge uh, Jay Stewart, who is the incoming administrative judge for the First Judicial Administrative District. Thank you for being here. Judge uh, Shakira Barnes from the Office of the State Administrative Hearings. We have Sally Akins, the president-elect of the State Bar. Uh, and we have Judge Kite's family, his wife, Walda, and his daughter, Lauren, uh, with us today. Uh, we're going to try to get through this meeting um, in hopefully a little under 90 minutes, um, and then we will have some photos you're going to hear about, uh, and then tours of the building, uh, and, and then we'll have a box lunch at the end for people um, to have a little bit before they head back on the road. Um, we are going to do what we used to do at these meetings when we were live, which is go around the room and give people an opportunity to introduce themselves um, and uh, what uh, role they are here um, representing. Uh, and so I'm going to go around. Why don't we go this way? Okay. Good morning and welcome. Cynthia Clanton. I'm the director of the Judicial Council Administrative Office of the Courts. And it's, I am so glad to see you all in person. I'm Tracy Mason, Senior Assistant Director of the Judicial Council OSC. I'm Judge Gray Price from Flory County. I'm president of the Council of Juvenile Court Judges. I'm Render Hurd from Tiff County. I'm the president-elect of the Council of Juvenile Court Judges. I'm Wade Padgett. I am the president of the Council of Superior Court Judges for eight more days. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Art Smith. I'm a judge in the Chattahoochee Circuit and uh, the president-elect of the Council of Superior Court Judges, so I have about seven or eight days. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Lakes, I'm probate judge in Harris County and the outgoing president of the council.
council of probate board judges. Danielle McRae, uh, probate judge in Knox County. In eight days, I will be the president of the <laughs> probate judges council. I'm James Eisenhower. I'm with the Southwestern Judicial Circuit, and I'm the third administrative judicial judge. I'm Fletcher Sams from the Griffin Judicial Circuit, and I'm the sixth district court judge. I'm Lori Duff. I am the president of the council of municipal court judges for another 60 days or so. Uh, and I sit in cities of Monroe and Lawrenceville. Good morning, I'm Johnny Baker. I'm the president-elect of the Council of Municipal Court Judges, and I'm a judge, yeah. I'm a judge at the Atlanta <laughs> Municipal Court. Thanks, we'll stick with the members and then we'll ask the guests to introduce themselves. Good morning, I'm Emma Smith. I am the president-elect of the Council of Municipal Court Judges, and I am in Cobb County. Good morning, Quinn Casper from Cobb County. I am the current president of the Council of Magic Court Judges. Good morning, I'm Chris Brasher. I'm a Superior Court Judge here in Fulton County, serve as Chief Judge. Good morning, Asha Jackson from DeKalb County, Chief Judge of the Stone Mountain Judicial Circuit and Fourth District Administrative Judge. Jeff Hansen from the State Court of Bibb County. I'm here as the designee for our President Al Wong. I'm Vi Bennett. I'm from God's country. Y'all call it Wayne County. <laughs> <laughs> I am the State Court Judge, but the President-elect of the Council of State Court Judges. I'm Jeff Kine, Superior Court Judge, Wake Cross Circuit, and first uh, administrative uh, uh, AJ, and waiting for Judge Stewart to uh, to see me. So appreciate him being here, and I won't do this to my family. So my wife, Walter, and daughter Lauren are here as well. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Flournoy from the Cobb Judicial Circuit, and I'm the seventh administrative judge, seventh district. I'm Sarah Wall, I'm Superior Court Judge for the Oconee Judicial Circuit and I serve the 8th District AJ. I'm Tim Hamill, I'm from the Gwinnett Circuit and I'm the 9th District Administrative Judge. I'm Elizabeth Sight, I'm the President of the State Bar of Georgia and from June the 4th, <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you all in person. I'm Walt Davis, I'm the uh, Judge of the Statewide Business Court. I'm Amanda Mercier, I'm the Vice Chief Judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. I'm Brian Rickman, Chief Judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. Nils Peterson of the Supreme Court. I'm here on behalf of Presiding Justice Michael Boggs. All right, this is uh, Sergeant Dexter Harden from the State Patrol um, who provides our security in this building. And we want to go around. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Hyde, Judicial Counsel AOC, and I am the Division Director for Judicial Services. Good morning. My name is Alexis Stoney. Chief Judge of the State Court of Forsyth County here as the co-chair of the Cobra Judicial Task Force. Maria Wilson, Chief Financial Officer for Judicial Council, Administrative Officer of the Courts. I'm Gabby Overcash, I'm the 7th District Court Judge. Deborah Nesbitt, I'm here with the Council of Superior Court Judges. I'm Bob Gray, I'm the Executive Director for the Council of State Court Judges. I am by myself, if you're on Zoom, you notice that my British Judicial Council, AOC. This is Bruce Shaw, Judicial Council, AOC. Over to T. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lawrence, Court Executive, and Mr. Lawrence, Court 
<laughs> you got your guitar, I'll sing. <laughs> Good morning. I'm uh, David Mixon. I'm the second district uh, court administrator. Sharon Reese, executive director for the Council of Magistrate Court Judges. All right. Well, thank you. That took a minute, but it's nice to see some faces um, and bodies rather than uh, just Zoom. And I will note, I appreciate our staff. Uh, Judge Davis had his first jury trial in this room. Um, up until yesterday, he told me the jury returned a verdict um, yesterday evening, I guess. Uh, and so uh, this looked like a, a trial courtroom yesterday, and uh, now it looks like a meeting room. So our staff did a lot of work. Um, uh, we're going to now do the Pledge of Allegiance, which I'm going to ask Chief Judge Greg Price to lead. If you'll stand. stand and face the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Judge Price. Uh, our first action item is approval of the minutes of the January 7 emergency session and the February 11 general session. Uh, the draft minutes are in your materials behind tab one. Uh, can I get a motion, please, to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Okay. okay. Is there any discussion, any concern with either set of minutes? Okay. Is anyone opposed to adoption and approval of uh, the minutes of the January 7 and February 11th meetings? All right. Thank you. I, I will note if you went and actually looked at the minutes, you can see the um, transition we've made with regard to COVID. I mean, the January meeting was held because we're in the midst of the Omicron wave and trying to figure out what to do. The February minutes were a little more promising, and today we're able to meet in person um, in this room. So uh, things are changing uh, pretty fast. Uh, we're going to have uh, our committee reports next. The first is a report from the ARPA Funding Committee. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Vice Chief Judge Amanda Mercier uh, to present as uh, the chair of the committee, Justice Boggs, is not here. Hopefully everybody has that um, in front of them because it's a pretty lengthy tab. Um, we are going to rest primarily on that report today, but there are a couple of supplemental things I'd like to mention. The third and final application cycle for calendar year 2022 funding took place from April the 1st to April the 15th. Eleven applications have been received and are under the reviewing process now, which takes a little bit of time. The committee will meet on May 13th to make any award decisions of funding that will be effective June 1st, 2022. Awards will be announced following that meeting and there will be a press release and you can see the previous press releases in tab two as well. The committee plans to meet in August to discuss some administrative matters ahead of the, the year two of the program and applications for uh, calendar year 2023. Those are scheduled to be accepted between September the 15th uh, through, and September the 15th through the 30th. Uh, Chief Justice, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, thank you. I do want to uh, note, I know there's been some frustration with the pace of this whole process and particularly with uh, reimbursements as, peop as circuits have started to submit requests. Um, I can assure you that Presiding Justice Boggs and the AOC staff is, have been spending an inordinate amount of time uh, trying to sort out the issues and, and clear up um, problems, particularly in dealing with OPB. Uh, the reimbursement submissions, the first ones came in in February following the first month of expenses, which was January. As of yesterday afternoon of the uh, 26 circuits that, uh, that received funding in the first cycle, 17 have requested uh, reimbursement and 
including reimbursement for senior judges. And as of uh, yesterday, at least nine of those have been approved in part. Um, the senior judge reimbursements have moved um, almost entirely through. So uh, I just want to let you know there is some frustration, but money is starting to flow out and the process and some of the problems are starting to be cleared up. Um, we do need you on, on your side um, to pay real close attention to the information that's coming out from the committee, um, largely through uh, they're doing it as frequently asked questions as we get things cleared up about what documentation you need to provide or about particular things that you can get reimbursement for or can't. Uh, that's how they're getting out the information and you know, the more you align with that um, and raise questions within that framework, the quicker this process can, can go. And also, if you're hitting problems, the quicker uh, Presiding Justice Boggs and Malia and the other folks at AOC um, can try to get those issues cleared up with OPB. But uh, we're all kind of frustrated, but it is a giant process, and frankly, we're moving quicker through trying to get the money we have out than most of the other ARPA money going through all the other processes to different um, parts of the state government. Um, are there any, uh, oh, and the other thing I'll say is, is just, we are gonna be entering a second year of requests. Um, Vice Chief Judge Mercier talked about the meeting in September, but then we'll start uh, looking at calendar year 2023, and hopefully a lot of these things will be worked out, and, and there can be a lot of uh, progress made in 2023 because we need to clear out these backlogs, which are pretty significant as we see information from around the state. We need to start clearing those out because speedy trial uh, processes, even with the extensions you're allowed to do, um, start running out as we get uh, another year or so down the road. Are there any questions uh, about the ARPA process? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you, uh, Vice Chief Judge Mercier and the other folks who are working on the committee, um, including most of the administrative uh, judges in the room. Um, the next item is a report from the Budget Committee. Uh, Justice Bethel. Thank you, Chief. I um, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, it's always good to give a budget report in a good budget year. Um, as a preliminary matter, the, the requests that we brought to the General Assembly were all fully funded. I mean, that's one of the most important piece to, to note. Um, you will see at tab three a full report uh, from the Budget Committee and where we are from a financial standpoint. I want to hit a point of personal privilege, a couple of highlights, and then if you have any questions, I'll certainly uh, respond to them. The, the personal piece is just to note uh, what I've noted elsewhere, and that is that our friend, meaning uh, the judicial branch and Georgia's friend, Terry England, who has chaired the House um, Appropriations Committee for many years now, is not standing for re-election, so we will see a new chair, uh, but before Terry uh, England departs, I hope that uh, when you have an opportunity, uh, you will extend thank yous to him uh, for the work he's done, not just as a friend to the judiciary uh, from, a, from an appropriation standpoint, but his service in general to the state. I, I tend to think that when um, those who articulated the, the notion that people could govern themselves uh, in a uh, democratic republic, Terry England is the sort of person they had in mind, uh, and so I'm thankful he's my friend. Um, in the amended fiscal budget, all of our requests were of the restoration variety, uh, and they were all funded uh, for the fiscal year that we are currently concluding, the fiscal year 22. Turning to uh, fiscal 23, what's often called the big budget uh, in the legislative process, but it's the new year that's coming, uh, all of the enhancements that we requested and that you had approved were funded uh, per our requests. Uh, in particular, the one I just want to highlight because I think it's a, a, a hopeful success for us is the full funding of the Kinship Care uh, Grant. Uh, that is a program that we've been working on for several years and this is the increase that we got this year reflects the full funding of the initial proposal. So we continue to hope that that will bear fruit uh, or know that it will bear fruit and look forward to what it will do. Um, you did not task your budget committee with securing a $5,000 raise. 
but uh, you know we, uh, <laughs> we won't take credit for it. But I will note that from a budgetary standpoint, obviously that's an impact to all of our budgets um, and certainly to the judicial councils as well. Um, and then a housekeeping note uh, that the standing committee will receive white papers uh, in for, for the amended fiscal year 23 budget and the amended fiscal year 20 or in the fiscal year 24 budget uh, uh, from May the 3rd through June the 15th. Uh, we will send out a meeting notification for the standing committee uh, on or before May the 9th um, to, to start addressing those issues. So as much as we celebrate the end of a cycle, uh, as, is, as is always the custom, uh, the new cycle has already started and we look forward to the next things that we work on. Um, my next report, which I won't jump into until you, you're ready, Chief, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the additional judgeships. But from a budgetary standpoint, I'll just note that they were funded um, uh, per, per consistent with practice. All right, are there any questions about uh, the budget report? Let me add my thanks um, to the General Assembly, particularly Chairman England and Chairman Blake Tillery um, and the Appropriations Subcommittees. I think almost all of our, well, all of our councils got the funding cuts uh, that were at the beginning of the pandemic restored, which was tremendously valuable. Um, and, and then the cost of living increases um, for not only judges, but the entirety of the judicial staff um, it, uh, the state paid, paid employees is really um, something that was somewhat unexpected but very well received um, and, and we really appreciate the partnership and support. There were a few times this year where Chairman Tillery in particular called us um, over to talk about things. Um, they weren't always good things but we normally don't even get told when bad things are going to happen and so <laughs> You know, it was really nice to be included in that process, to have the opportunity to weigh in and, and express concerns um, and to have that really listened to. So um, that's very valuable, and we hope that whoever Chairman England's successor is um, will continue the good work that uh, he provided. Uh, Justice Bethel, you, can you uh, give a report on the Legislation Committee? I will. Thank you, Chief. Um, in the absence of the presiding justice, I will give a report from the Standing Committee on Legislation. Uh, you will see at tab four a, a, a more full report uh, than what I'll give you here. If you have any questions, certainly about those now or, or, or later. Uh, and then obviously our team, Tracy Mason, uh, produces a session summary. And if you haven't seen that and would like to see it, certainly um, reach out to me or to Tracy and we'll make sure that you have a full session summary of bills that relate to the judicial branch. Uh, the particular things I'd like to highlight, uh, House Bill 916, which Representative Rob Leverett carried, which is the Judicial Council's um, uh, initiative uh, for the Superior and State Court Appellate Practice Act. Uh, this is a multi-year effort with, uh, I, I'm going to say some thank yous, but I'm going to in it, invariably leave out some folks, and so I'll apologize for that in advance, because a lot of people worked diligently on this. I wanna note at least, Presiding Judge uh, Chris McFadden, Judge Jackson, G Gary Jackson, uh, Judge Margaret Washburn, Judge Michael Barker, and many interested practitioners who came and participated in the process, testified at committee hearings to make sure that our legislators understood uh, the import, and we are very grateful for them uh, and look forward to the um, implementation, which is not actually until July 1 of 23, which allows us all uh, opportunity to get ready uh, to operate under a new set of rules, but we think that they will streamline the process and benefit the public and the, and the uh, courts as well. Um, the rest of the report items you'll see in our report, but uh, we are refocusing our efforts and look forward to working on uh, what has now become sort of a, a many years initiative with the Court Reporting Matters Committee uh, and the stakeholders around that. Um, that that's, a, that's a project that we certainly want to see across the finish line. I will note this, the State Court Judges Council had a couple of initiatives outside, you know, in other words, not part of Judicial Council, and I didn't know if Judge Bennett wanted to speak to them. Both of them achieved final passage, um, but, th th you know, we appreciate, uh, you know, being in contact and working with them in that process. Did, did, okay. <laughs> I, I have no doubt we're ready to <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. Uh, and then uh, just note, as I mentioned, uh, from the budgetary standpoint, the, uh, the legislature created three new judgeships. Uh, the Blue Ridge Circuit, uh, the South Georgia Circuit, and the Mountain Circuit all received a new Superior Court judgeship. 
uh, that uh, there were other bills in play relative to, to new judgeships. That reflects the ranking of our Judicial Workload Assessment, uh, assessment Committee in terms of priority of need. Uh, and so we appreciate being able to be a partner with the legislature in that initiative um, on an ongoing basis. I want to thank our team, meaning all of the judges and staff that participate in the, the legislative process, uh, remind um, our team that when we work together, which we, we did well this year, that's when we've achieved our best success uh, and it allows us to sort of you know, present a singular voice to legislators, which is truly invaluable uh, when you get different messages uh, in a room where there's 180 on one side of the building and 56 on the other, your chances of success uh, de de decrease significantly. Um, and then again, just like on the budget side, uh, to remind everybody, we actually will have, I guess, an, a lot of these new soon-to-be presidents that we heard uh, introduced. Uh, all of our council presidents are members of this committee, uh, so we will have a new roster, I guess, filled out uh, by July 1 there. Um, but we will start our process for the 2023 legislative session in mid-May. Uh, so again, it always starts uh, sooner than you think it would come. Uh, if you want to reach out to myself, the presiding justice, or Tracy about any questions, we certainly would do that then. If you have any questions now, I'll try my best to uh, find somebody who can answer them. Any questions? Again, it was a pretty good legislative year, um, particularly, it, it's a reminder sometimes like, uh, you know, the Appellate uh, Certiorari Practice Act, that was a long time in the making, and there were a lot of time where people said, you know, we'll never get this through because it's just so complicated and hard for everyday legislators to care about, but um, that consistent work got it over the goal line this year. So appreciate everyone's efforts and appreciate uh, Justice Bethel and, and Presiding Justice Boggs and all the other folks who have worked on uh, legislation this year. Uh, thank you, Justice Bethel. And uh, let me ask uh, Chief Judge Leonard, if you will give uh, the report, and we have some action items from the Judicial Workload Assessment Committee. And I will start by, I'll start by noting, I think this is your first, oh, maybe your second meeting as second. the chair, but the, on Zoom last time the first the live day. one, uh, stepping into the shoes of De, uh, Judge Emerson, um, and this is one of the hardest tasks we ask any of our uh, judges to fill, so appreciate that. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Judge David Emerson wore like a size 22 when he was doing this, <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm growing into that. So uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity. You'll find your, uh, me and your materials at tab five for, for JWAC. There are a few things that we need to discuss, and then would you like me to just do one action item at the end, and we'll kind of vote on it all as a group? Is that suitable to you, Chief? That's good. All right. Good. All right. So the first is the update on the policy for judgeships and circuit boundary studies. We wanted to make it clear in our policy that uh, we are conducting feasibility studies, especially when it comes to circuit boundary studies, and not actually recommending. Uh, that's the function of the General Assembly, and so we wanted to make that clear in our policy. Additionally, we wanted to make it clear that we were going to provide um, some more elaborate notice. We're going to notify all uh, affected judges within circuits if there was a request, even if it didn't come from a, from a judge in that circuit, say it came from a legislator, we were going to let all the judges know uh, in that circuit um, that they would, uh, there was a request for a circuit boundary study. So you'll see that in there towards the beginning of the materials on the policy updates. Um, those are the, those are the biggest, um, the biggest alterations in there. If anybody has any questions about any of that, I'm happy to, to take them. Um, Moving along, there's item number two is the juvenile case count collection form. There's just one. Uh, you'll see the little highlighted is just uh, case entries filed for the number of juveniles. That's the only update in that form. There are some corresponding definition updates that follow that. Dependency dispositions, uh, special proceedings, and uh, TPRs um, are our definition updates there. Item four in your materials, this is the civil and domestic filing information form. At the February meeting, we updated uh, definition to go with the form under domestic relations, and that was the modification of custody. We felt like um, <clears throat> lumping, uh, lumping modifications of custody, which in Superior Court are our, probably our, our highest you know, labor-intensive uh, function that we tend to do. Um, it was being lumped in with a number of other different sort of reopened cases. So we kind of split off modifications of custody to make our, 
our, um, our case counts a little more accurate. There was, a, there was an update on that as well with the support definitions, and you remember we added in um, stalking TPOs with the family violence TPOs for our case counting purposes. So now uh, is for the action item here is to actually update the form, and so you'll see that highlighted the modification of custody concerning uh, its custody, parenting time, and visitation. Okay, they all get lumped into the one, uh, one category. So those are the issues um, that I have for you. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions about any of these proposals? Okay, we'll take it as a motion from the committee um, to approve these uh, four proposals. Uh, is there a second? Well, we don't need a second from the committee, I think. Um, is there any... Uh, Discussion before we vote. Okay, is there anyone opposed to approving uh, the four proposed adjustments to the Judicial Workload Assessment Committee's materials? All right, they will be approved. Thanks for your work. Um, I think this will both, particularly the boundary study um, materials, will both make sure more people are aware of what's going on and also limit um, some of the work that AOC has had to do looking at circuit boundary adjustments that no one really asked us to look at but they were just part of the process and we'll look at the ones that people who want a circuit boundary uh, adjustment actually want us to look at the adjustment you just approved um, does allow for us to kind of pre-screen it and have jeffrey reach out and say what was the legislative intent what did what were y'all trying to achieve so we don't have to study 10 different things when they were maybe only exploring one and before i step away from the microphone i just want to say um, thank you to everybody that helped get the message out about participating in the time and motion study. I'm happy to report that there was an increase in participation. We were up to about 70%, which I, I think is, is good considering how busy judges are and how difficult it is to get everybody to participate, especially when they've got, you know, vacations and things like that and uh, uh, busy, busy calendars. So I was happy with 70%. Um, Judge Stewart's going to be trying to get the message out, get everybody involved in the focus groups so we can really, really hone in on what we need to. So be looking for emails. Please let everybody know in your sphere of influence, please participate in those focus groups. Uh, everybody should have gotten emails from your BCAs about when and where those are. They start May 2nd. Um, so you've turned all the lights on me. I need to sit down. <laughs> That's a hook. <laughs> I don't know how to control those, but I'm going to learn how because it could be very useful. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Judge Leonard, uh, for the report and the committee for your work. And, and I'll reiterate, you know, these, these time and motion studies and workload assessment seem like a hassle when you're going through them, but they are, in fact, what ends up producing additional judges for our state. And so uh, I hope you'll invest the time uh, needed to make them as accurate as possible. Um, we're, we're next going to turn to report from the Technology <coughs> Committee, uh, Judge Le, uh, Justice Agru or Judge Kelly. Steve, with your permission, I'll defer to Judge Kelly. That's always a good idea. <laughs> you appointed. <laughs> I also had to take over after uh, Judge Emerson, and so, uh, but luckily he has uh, still stayed involved uh, with the technology. But uh, yeah, he's he was he's kind of hard to follow. The Technology Committee, uh, we've, already, we've, we've been meeting by Zoom, and that's been nice. Uh, used to, in the days we had, we like, it's nice to have in person, but it's also nice to be able to have uh, the Zoom meetings, and we have several subcommittees. It's very, um, it's interesting, of course, that part of the strategic plan of the Judicial Council, the AOC, uh, in Georgia is to improve citizens' experience with the court system. And everything today, if you, if I would agree that most of our experiences, whether it's banking or whatever, is always through online stuff. Everything's online now. The court system has not been quite as uh, uh, upfront with that, I guess, or as advanced as a lot of businesses, because uh, we're you know, a little bit different than other businesses, obviously. But I want to thank uh, uh, getting started here with the committee. We've kind of tried to refocus where we're going to get, be going. Uh, and we have had, some, had a really good meeting. I want to thank, uh, of course, Ben Luke and Christy uh, for their excellent support and all the AOC staff for uh, supporting the Technology Committee. Um, we have uh, 
several committees that we work on. One of the big things that the committee uh, reviews every time is the gateway, which is really the web website portal. I'm not sure, I can't remember how many hits it has, but it's in a lot. I mean, thousands and thousands of people hit that website every day, going to other sites in Georgia. It's a good, por a good gateway or portal. And is uh, one of the other things that we have to look at, we have a subcommittee on rules. So as technology changes, then rules need to change. Uh, we have, uh, have a subcommittee uh, that we participate with, along with workload on uh, automated data collection. We have a subcommittee that's working on protective orders. What does that have to do with technology? Well, because protective orders are in, into a database. Well, they need to be taken out of the database. And there happens to be a little problem with the criminal, like bond orders and things of that nature, the magistrate courts, you know, things get entered in, but then who takes them out? And, what, and the GCIC has been working with us on that, and we'll have a more detailed, hopefully, uh, report on getting some of those things corrected. There's been a subcommittee on standardization of video files and other files that are go up through the appellate record. Um, that's uh, something we struggle with in the trial court, having different pro proprietary systems to show a case, but then if you have a standard format, you wanna make sure you don't have any kind of data loss uh, so you have some evidence issues, so we're working on that. I wanted to, um, in talking with uh, uh, Ben Luke, technology director, I wanted to try to focus, we, uh, where do we want this technology committee to go? A couple of the areas that I was, uh, he wants to focus in and I wanna focus in, the committee approved those, is, is starting to look at education for the whole state, uh, standardization of certain standards. Well, that's fine if you do that, but then how do you get it? There's 1,300, over 1,300 courts. Ms. Clanton will have to tell me exactly. It's a lot of courts out there. And the majority of the courts are not in the Atlanta area. I mean, there's a lot outside that have no technology whatsoever. So uh, I know they have, we're going, our next meeting we're going to be focusing in, they've hired a graphic designer to kind of redo the portal a little bit so it's easier, uh, improve the search so when you go to search things you can find it. Because uh, if you have all these good standards but you can't find them, what good would it be? Uh, those are just a, a few of the things that we're working on in technology committee. We're a very busy committee, a lot of important things. In fact, no other questions, I'll sit down before the lights go down. <laughs> so. any, any questions for Judge Kelly? Well, there is a lot of good work being done by technology, and as you say, that seems to be the center of much of our lives these days. So, appreciate that. We need some money, right? Uh, so, that would help too. All right, thank y'all. Thank you. Uh, Justice Agrua and, and Chief Judge McClellan uh, report on, from the Judicial COVID uh, Task Force. Thank you, Chief. This will be short. First, I want to thank uh, Chief Justice Namius for continuing the task force. Again, we have a lot of work to do. Um, as Judge Kelly just cited the strategic plan, it's interesting that the fourth number of the strategic plan is to enhance the professional and ethical image of the judiciary. And while the task force is not completely comprised of the judiciary, I think it's gone a long way in working with our counterparts in the legal profession to do that. And I see Elizabeth Fite, who's been very active with us, and I suspect she agree. I will tell you that I've never seen a more collegiate group of people work through and compromise so that we kept going during this pandemic um, from both sides. And it was amazing to see if lawyers had the reputation that they had on this task force, we'd probably be better perceived. Um, the chief has given us uh, direction as we keep going and that is to update the pandemic bench book. Uh, the original bench book, for those of you that remember, centered a lot on tuberculosis and those things. We've learned a lot over the last two years, so we have started in that process. We're actually pretty well along in it. Uh, I wanna thank Judge McClellan, where to go, there he is, who's been my co-chair and backbone of this committee. I also wanna thank the working group chairs um, because we split up the pandemic bench book into four areas. The criminal section, Judge Kathy Goslin and Judge Ken Hodges. The civil working group is chaired by Elizabeth Fite. The family, techno or the family working group is chaired by Judge Paige Whitaker, and the technology working group is chaired by Judge Rob Leonard. I also finally want to give a special thanks to the AOC, Cynthia Clanton, and Cheryl Cronus, and Samantha Wolf for all their support and help during this. If you have any ideas for the bench book as we're going forward, please let either myself or Judge McClellan know. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Justice Agrua, and thanks uh, to the task force for their work. Um, you know, we are trying to 
collect our lessons learned from the last few years so that if we ever have to deal with something like this in the future, um, we'll be better prepared. Um, the Strategic Planning Committee is just a written report behind tab eight in your materials. Um, and in the interest of moving forward and getting through the meeting, um, we're going to move to reports uh, from the Judicial Council, Ms. Clinton. Would you like me to take it from here? May, uh, either way. Whatever. I'd like to take it. Let me go over there. Justices, judges, and judicial branch leaders. Today, Chief Justice Nomius is chairing his last Judicial Council general session. It's difficult for me to say farewell to the Chief as he nears at the close of his tenure as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia and chair the Judicial Council. But my heart is warmed by the reason for his departure, a very well-deserved break after a stellar career devoted almost exclusively to government service. His leadership has been inspiring. Warmest congratulations, Chief. In tandem with that news comes the opportunity for me to congratulate Presiding Justice Boggs, who will succeed Chief Justice Namias on July 18th, and in turn, Justice Peterson, who will become Presiding Justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia and Vice Chair of the Judicial Council at that same time. My staff and I have listened to the recent seminar by Justice Counts, the national initiative chaired by Presiding Justice Boggs, that, dedicated, um, that is dedicated to providing decision makers with more timely and accurate data to improve public safety. We look forward to assisting Presiding Justice Boggs with this priority. And Justice Peterson, we look forward to your leadership and working closely with you. Rest up. I'm pleased to report that House Bill 916, the Superior Court, the Superior and State Court Appellate Practice Act, important legislation to modernize appellate procedure from municipal magistrate and some probate courts, drafted and supported by the Judicial Council passed unanimously, yay, in the Senate on sine die, the last day of the session. Support and leadership for this bill were indispensable from presiding Judge Chris McFadden, Judge McGarry Jackson, Chief Justice Namias, presiding Justice Boggs, Justice Bethel, Justice Peterson, and the entire CERT review subcommittee. We also appreciate our friends at the State Bar for their support on this initiative. Thanks, Elizabeth. AOC General Counsel, Assistant General Counsel Darren Enns, who many of you know, was the bill's primary drafter, and he and the Judicial Council's legislative team worked many long hours to shepherd this bill successfully through the General Assembly. Judicial Council's Ad Hoc Committee on American Rescue Plan Act funding, ARPA, continues working tirelessly, tirelessly to get funds where they are needed. I invite you to learn the latest on the ARPA grant work at our JCAOC georgiacourts.gov backslash ARPA website. Through that website, you can subscribe to an email list for updates. The Judicial COVID Task Force continues to meet regularly and is now focusing its work on updating the pandemic bench book. In mid-March, Chief Justice Namias created the new Judicial Council Ad Hoc Committee on Judicial Emergency Preparedness, a topic that was brought home to us most recently when a tornado touched down in Bryan County, hitting the courthouse. The order creating the committee is in your Judicial Council materials under tab nine. Thankfully, State Court Judge Billy Tomlinson reported to us that everyone was able to shelter in the courthouse vault, which protected them from injury, thank goodness. Court of Appeals Trey Pipkin and Superior Court Judge Amanda Petty will chair this new committee whose work will begin in May. For Black History Month 2022, we asked some of our seasoned judges from every class of court 
all over the state to share their words of wisdom for the next generation of lawyers and judges. Their words were moving and inspiring and garnered great press coverage. We did a similar project for Women's History Month, and judges offered gems of advice on developing a successful legal career, which were equally inspirational. Thank you to the many judges, including Vice Chief Mercier and Judge Baker, who participated in these wonderful community engagement projects, which enhanced the professional and ethical image of the Georgia judiciary. As part of our ongoing community engagement and civics <coughs> education efforts, we collected 173 entries from Georgia students from kindergarten to 12th grade for the 2022 Judicial Council Law Day Art Contest. Now this is where I need your help, okay? So in your packet, you've got a green sheet and some art, art submissions. I need you, and I know Judge Florida has already finished his, and it's not hard. You get to be a judge here at the Judicial Council today. So I need you to, to look at the booklet and pick the top winners and leave the green sheet for us after the meeting, if you could. The Judicial Council, again, co-sponsored Georgia Bar Media and Judiciary Conference that took place in late February. Court of Appeals presiding Judge Sarah Doyle participated in a panel discussion on communicating in the disinformation age. And Chatham County Superior Court Judge Lisa Colbert participated in a panel and lessons learned from lawyers, judges, and the media in light of the Ahmad Arbery case. Thank you to Fulton County Magistrate Court Judge Elizabeth Manuel for speaking at our February all staff meeting to Court of Appeals Judge Andrew Penson for doing the same in March, and to Superior Court Judge Ural Glanville for joining our recent April meeting yesterday. Kudos to Atlanta Legal Aid and Georgia Legal Services for collaborating on an updated website that provides easy to understand legal navigation information on a wide array of legal topics for all Georgians. We thank the Council of State Court Judges, especially President Wong, and our buddy Executive uh, Director Bob Bray, who treated the AOC staff to pies on Pie Day, which is March 14th, if you don't know that. We appreciated the gesture, and the pies were absolutely delicious. Now, for my perennially favorite part, our judicial branch babies. Judge Paget has two new grandchildren. This is Harrison, right, Judge Paget? Yep. Look at that hair. Where did he get that hair from? He was born last year, and he also has a brand new granddaughter, little Claire. What a cutie. She's got that serious look on her face. She was born February 17th, 2022. Council Superior Court Judges uh, Staffer Tony Mead has a new grandchild, Evelyn. I think she is the happiest baby I've ever seen. Municipal Court Judge Margaret Washburn has a little princess, her granddaughter Waverly Scott, Scarlett, and Lottie, the daughter of AOC General Counsel Jessica Farah. AOC Attorney Billy Scott has two twin nieces. I'm gonna need to order more bibs. And finally, Justice Lagrua has a new puppy. Congratulations, <laughs> Justice Lagrua. This is Pistol pictured here with her other dog, Baby. And what kind of dogs are those? Bernese Mountain Dogs. Bernese Mountain Dogs. They are beautiful, but that's a big baby. <laughs> that's a lot of dog food. Again, the AOC is a service agency for the Georgia's judges and statewide resource. We exist to serve you, all of you with the Judicial Council and our partners. That's what we're here for. As always, please call on me anytime to support the important work you do each day and improve justice. Enjoy your flag cookies made by our very own legal intern to celebrate the chief, because he loves flags. I do love flags. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clanton, and thanks for the work that you do and, and all of the AOC staff to support uh, the judiciary throughout the state and for your personal support of me over the years. I appreciate it. Um, we'll move to reports from courts, councils, and the state bar. 
Uh, the Supreme Court's report is in your materials, um, and uh, I'm not going to add to it at this point. Um, Court of Appeals, Chief Judge Rickman. Good morning. Uh, we will stand for the most part on our written report. Two quick things to say. First, to all our trial court judges, on behalf of the court, we want to thank you for what you're doing, digging out of the pandemic. Sorry we don't get to do much more than, than sit back and fly spec everything you do later in the record. <laughs> so I thought I would offer a genuine heartfelt thank you today. And at least when you curse us later, it'll go over a little better. Um, and finally, Chief, Mr. Chief Justice, uh, you will not want me to say that because I know you say what I'm about to say because I know you pretty well. Um, I want to thank you for your service. I was trying to think about the words that I could say to you today on the occasion of your last meeting and two things come to mind. The first one is uh, you're taking a break and uh, do not know about your plans to practice, but you need to let us know first because I'm going to reshuffle the panels so that Judge Mercier and I try to get the first crack at you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a career highlight, number one. <laughs> and finally, uh, I can only hope what I have learned the last several years uh, and all you men and women know is that in this business popularity is not something you can care about. You're only going to be batting 50% if you're doing your job at any given time. Uh, I hope that people someday will say I'm sincere and that I tried very hard to make the judiciary better. What I can say about you having worked these years with you is unquestionably not a single thing you have ever done, whether I completely agreed or didn't agree, was for any reason other than to make the Georgia judiciary excellent, honest, hardworking, and the best that you possibly thought it could be. Um, I have never in every committee meeting or every private discussion seen the least bit of uh, self-interest on your part whatsoever. And I will tell you this, if I ever get done and someone can say that about me, uh, I would prefer them to say that than to swoon over an opinion I wrote, and it can certainly be said about you. You'll get the opinion swooning as well, um, but I want to say a very sincere thank you and also for the sacrifices you have made, and it is very much appreciated. That is very yeah. kind. Thank you, and as all judges know, for the opinions and rulings you make, half the people don't like them because they were on the other side, so it's got to be about trying to do it the right way. Thank you. Um, uh, Judge Davis, Statewide Business Court. I don't know how you follow that. And you don't, <laughs> you all don't need to all follow right. that. <laughs> Thank um, you. I'm usually, usually short in these things, but uh, today I'd, I'd like to ask for your indulgence and apologize for my lack of, my lack of brevity. Um, as you heard, we had our first jury trial, um, and I'm, for the folks in this room, you're, you have had hundreds if not thousands of more. Um, I had my first. Um, and the theme today for me is gratitude, as, as you all, as you all know, um, the, the business court is charged with uh, trying its cases in the venue where the case could have otherwise been brought in the first instance or was, was brought in the first instance. And um, I, I fancy myself lucky that my first jury trial was, was uh, scheduled to be down the road in, in Fulton County. Um, the, so that's, that's where I would like to start uh, with, with Judge Brasher. Uh, Judge McBurney, you all have, I, I can only imagine, a jury services team that is second to none. Um, and Judge Taylor for setting up virtual voir dire and that process. Um, you know, we, we uh, were ready for trial in December, and then this thing called Omicron came along. Um, and so we came up with um, the, the bright idea at the time to have the trial here in this room and, and to, to do it with the, the virtual voir dire process. It could not have gone better, and I imagine it is here to stay in some form or fashion. Um, and, uh, but we went over to the Fulton County Courthouse to, to pick the jury, and your team treated us um, like we were part of your team. And, and I'm, I'm grateful, um, in particular, I, I will risk singling people out, but uh, Susan Shaver is a, is a gem, and um, we are particularly grateful to her for putting up with us for, for the day. Um, I'd also like to thank these, these four to my right. Um, you know, the, I think less work went into putting a man on the moon than it did to actually trying the, the put, putting this room together. If you could have seen it from, I wish I'd, I'd saved a picture. 
um, what this looked like um, Monday through Wednesday, and then we were we moved upstairs uh, yesterday for for deliberations. But um, it was it, it it took a Herculean effort, and it started with the approval of of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals to allow me to sort of impinge upon not just this space, which we share, but the hallways and the bathrooms. And I mean, it, it, we tried to make the chaos organized the best we could, but. Um, to, to T. Barnes and Steve Castlin um, and, and their leadership, and in particular uh, Lynn Terrell, uh, Bob McAteer, and Mike Harkness, um, the latter two are in charge of, of, of IT and support us. Um, man, the work they put in was just was was all inspiring. Um, and and lastly, just a heartwarming story, if you would. Um, at the end of our what year? Uh, session after the jury was picked, we went to sign off, and I think one juror thought we were already off, and she dropped a very loud f bomb <laughs> at, at having been chosen. Um, <laughs> at uh, at the um, right, um, that may happen a lot more. Right, and and at the end of trial, after the verdict had been rendered and the jury released, um, I went and visited with them for a moment, uh, thanked them for their service. Ask them, of course, what could we do better next time they um, understanding that this was our first. Um, and, and they said, you know, um, I think we overfed them, for, to be quite honest. But, um, you know, nothing except for hire more Tynesha Manuals. And so for you all who have been on this committee for quite a long time would know that uh, Ms. Manuel was with the AOC. Um, and then they proceeded to stand up and give her a standing ovation. And... Um, they didn't want to leave, which also means we probably, you know, did something wrong in that process. Um, but it really was a credit to to uh, Miss Manuel and her efforts in, in uh, assisting them throughout the trial. So I wanted on my team, I wanted to, I wanted to highlight her efforts. She she really was exceptional. Um, I'd like to invite you to come up and visit after this. Um, we'll be part of the tour, but we'll also just sort of be around to visit. Uh, thank you for indulging me in those stories and the thanks. But um, I'm grateful to be a part of this group. Thank you, Judge Davis. I know you're happy to be through that process this week, and uh, yeah, I <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, Council of Superior Court Judges, Judge Wade Padgett. Thank you very much. We're going to stand on our report. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, um, the, um, the thing that I would say is that the judges of our court, to, to, to sort of echo what said we are hard at work we're digging we're digging as hard as we can we're having to still continue to do things differently than we once did and we a lot of the old ways maybe now permanently <clears throat> are no longer available but I will tell you that that we are working very hard to to work on the caseload and and to get to a place where we can be good stewards, good stewards of the assets that we're being afforded through ARPA, but at the same time, providing true justice to people who have been waiting on that patiently in some cases, not so patiently in others. And we are trying very hard to get there. Now, on the, on the, the, the personal side, I will tell you, I, I, you can't follow what Justice Rickman said. I echo everything he said. But I'll tell you that when you think about what sort of legacy you leave, um, being somebody that is consistent and you can count on to always be brutally honest, whether it be make you feel good or not, <laughs> that's a pretty good way to be known. And, um, and, and that is how we know you. So with that being said, this is my last meeting as a president and I'm, for a whole different reason, I will not be a part of this, but um, thank you for your leadership and, um, and your friendship, appreciate it. Thank you, and it's been good working with you. Um, uh, the Council of State Court Judges, Judge Vi Bennett. Judge, we'll stand, uh, we'll stand on our report, but uh, I can't let you all to go by without saying something. And I'll tell you something that my daddy told me a long time ago. He was a long-time clerk of Superior Court. And he said, you know, your time on this earth does not belong to you. It belongs to the God that created you. It belongs to the family that loves you. It belongs to the people that need you, and you, you just mirrored that throughout your life, and I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Judge Greg Price, Counsel of Juvenile Court Judges. Thank you, Judge. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. We'll stand on our report, but I can't at this opportunity pass <laughs> without uh, letting this whole body know what you've meant to the youth of our state and to our Dean Court judges. Many people don't know how many times you've been to our conferences, how many times you've spoken to us, how much work you've done with uh, TJCC and all those things. As you'll see, um, on behalf of the children of the state of Georgia, I'd like to thank you for your service. Thank you, and I'm glad that uh, Justice Charlie Bethel will be succeeding me in a lot of those roles. Um, Judge Thomas Lakes from the Council of Probate Court Judges. to balance work-life balance, professional pursuits and what sort. I don't think that's foreign to anybody in this room. Um, I appreciate uh, last year the humanity that you showed during your investiture. That really, I think, touched me and was one of the things I heard echoed across our uh, class of court, and I appreciate that. And I think any time any of us can put our faith and our family at the forefront of what we do, it kind of makes it a not necessarily an easy decision to make, but it makes it the easy choice and I commend you for doing that, and I appreciate your leadership. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Judge Quinn Casper from the Council of Magistrate Court Judges. Thank you, Chief. Um, we will rest on our report. I would echo what all of your colleagues have said, both about the hard work that's gone in from our court over the last few years, but also um, the things that they've said about you individually. I have not gotten to work with you as long as several of those folks, um, but I can tell you as a practicing attorney, I know that we all appreciate you for what you've done for this council, but also what you've done for the legal profession and the state of Georgia. So thank you so much for your service. Thank you, Judge. Judge Lori Duff from the Council of Municipal Court Judges. but I hope you'll pay a special attention to our legislative efforts. We've had an extremely successful legislative year, and I won't go into the details because they're in the report, but we're very proud of the efforts that not only we've made, but everyone's made on our behalf and our judges that have worked for those successes. Uh, I would, like everyone else, like to thank Justice Nomius for his leadership. Uh, as a fellow Duke alum, I will tell you that uh, Listening to you talk often reminds me without the sailor on shore leave swearing of Coach K, which is a, quite a compliment in that you demand not just effort but excellence, uh, that you suffer no fools but ultimately are a caring and dedicated leader. And I want to thank you for that. It's been an honor to work with you uh, on these past couple years. Um, I'd also like to thank the AOC for all the support that they've given me uh, this past year as president. Uh, Cynthia Clanton has been not just practical support, but emotional support from time to time. Uh, Tracy has been just incredibly helpful with the legislative efforts and just always there when you had a question. Uh, Cheryl Karunas is also been very helpful, and that's just to name a few, everyone there, especially LaShawn Murphy, who's not here today because it is her birthday, and she is on the beach somewhere, but she's still watching us because that's how dedicated she is to her job. It's incredible. I've never in my life seen anyone work so hard. Um, I would, will say that of the two years being on this council, the most meaningful thing I think I've done is vote in the art contest. Um, <laughs> I, I love to see not just children get involved and, and learn to understand the, the process and, and just those little drawings showed so much understanding of what we're really trying to accomplish in the judiciary. Uh, but I'm also a huge supporter of anything art wise. So that's great. And I wish Judge Baker luck in, I know she'll do amazingly well in the next year. Thank you, Judge Duff. Uh, Ms. Fox from Thank the State you. Bar. Um, I do have a few things to report out. Uh, the State Bar Board of Governors met on April the 2nd in Athens, and we spent a lot of time debating the bar's budget, so you will probably notice this year that we have a dues increase of $6. We have spent the past few years mightily trying to cut internally and make uh, adjustments to the budget, 
But as you all know, with inflation and rising costs of labor, we've got some things that we've got to make up for too. Um, we were excited, like many of you, to see most of the state bar's legislative priorities passed during the session, including House Bill 752, the Advanced Psychiatric Directive Act, um, House Bill uh, 916, which was discussed here too, which is, I know is a priority for you all. And um, just as a reminder, so the conference committee could not reach an agreement on House Bill 334, the remote online notary legislation. And so with the governor's executive order permitting remote ink notary expiring this month, we expect to see remote online notary reemerge again next year as a fair warning. Um, this past year, I've made it a focus to brag on a lot of the offerings of the bar and in different meetings I've talked about them. But in light of the stress of the past two years and the pandemic, we've also been highlighting attorney wellness, lawyer wellness, um, and mental health. And um, at the meeting that we had in Athens, I spoke about the, the recent uh, lawyer suicides that we've had in the state. And I, I challenged the members and leaders there to think of ways in which they can be engaged and connect with their office and their community and you know just be a friend and reach out to people that you see in need. And so I challenge you all to do that too. But one thing I didn't do in that meeting that I wish I'd done that I'm gonna do today is ask you how you're doing. Because as leaders, we often shoulder the burdens of so many other people. And so I hope that you all take a moment to use the resources that the bar provides you to as part of your bar dues. Uh, use your six. We've got six free counseling sessions. We've got a lawyer assistance program. Or go to your peers. Do whatever you need to do. But do take a moment to ask how you're doing. Um, I care if anyone needs to talk to me afterwards or email me, please do. Or please reach out to somebody. Um, I will say that the summer is a busy time for the State Bar. We've got a lot of institutes coming up. I know a lot of you make those rounds. We've got our Real Property, Fiduciary, and Family Law Institute. Um, they are resuming their in-person meetings. We are also seeing a change in our ICLE um, leadership, so give us a little bit more grace as we have that transition. Our current executive director of the Bar, Damon Elmore, is acting as interim ICLE director for this moment, so just give us a little space. But we are excited to see what ICLE has to offer. And then finally, we hope to see many of you at our uh, annual meeting this summer, June 2nd to the 5th. Notice the 4th is when I stop being president. Um, and we will wrap up this bar year and we will swear in Sally Akins of Savannah as the state bar's new president. She's sitting in the middle over there. I know everyone knows her and she was introduced. So I look forward to seeing you there. Um, and so lastly, for me too, it's been a privilege to be the president of the state bar. It's been such a pleasure to get to know all of you. We've worked so closely over the past two years with the with the pandemic and the COVID task force. Um, the AOC staff is amazing. Everyone here, I just appreciate it. And as it relates to you, Chief, we will wish you well more fully at the State Bar meeting, but I'll say that the words I spoke at your investiture last year remain true today. And so with that, we appreciate you. Thank you, Ms. Clyde. Thanks for your service this year as president of our bar. Uh, whatever else we do, we're members of the State Bar of Georgia. Um, and, and I'll reiterate the wellness point among leaders. Um, I recently found out that one of the most distinguished and senior lawyers in Georgia, who I've worked with at times in my career, suffered through about a depression that he's just talking about now, that um, you know, I was working with him at times, and you, know, you knew he was kind of down, but had no idea of the depth he felt he was in during that time period. And partly because of, of uh, the words of Sally Yates, who's been very open about um, issues of suicide and, um, and was on a, a great program that the, Council, uh, the Commission on Professionalism hosted last year. Um, he's finally now talking about it publicly. He will be soon in a book. Um, and, but it was a great reminder to me that you know a lot of times the people at the top feel like they do have these burdens and don't want to talk about them or share them, um, and they suffer from the same issues and need the same help and support and compassion um, as any other folks. Um, we'll have some reports from uh, judicial branch agencies. Uh, Ms. Jones from the Council of Accountability Court Judges. Thank you. partnerships um, to help make Georgia's accountability court successful without that shared services model. Um, 
we would we wouldn't be as successful, um, and we're able to really contribute to helping our court produce those positive participant outcomes. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, Ms. Johnson from the Commission on Dispute Resolution. We are going to stand on our written report, but we would like to thank you for your leadership, your support, and wish you the best in your next chapter. Thank you. Um, Mr. Holloman from the Council of Superior Court Clerks. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. I uh, want to note one piece of legislation that passed during this past session and should become effective over the next month, that being Senate Bill 441. Uh, that bill reconstitutes the Criminal Case Data Exchange Board as an advisory board to the Council of Superior Court Clerks and directs the Council to create rules for criminal data exchange for our members in cooperation and collaboration with the CCDX Board, which will apply statewide. So you'll be hearing more about that uh, probably in our July meeting. Uh, even though the bill has not become effective, uh, the minutes from the first meeting of my staff are dated day 41 to give you an idea of when we started because it's a monumental task. Uh, we've reached out over the last two weeks to the prosecutors, Georgia Technology Authority, Georgia Crime Information Center, spoke with Mr. Neal uh, prior to this meeting with CJCC. We're trying to uh, assess the lay of the land and, and find a way forward because it is very important to get criminal data accurately into all of the networks that it belongs. Uh, and as others, uh, Mr. Chief Justice, I want to thank you particularly for your openness and uh, to adopting and including many of our recommendations at the last uh, jury composition rule. The, that is a bear of a thing and you really dove in. I think you had some motivation from a certain case uh, that was here in Fulton County, the Ricks decision. But uh, you were very open, and I think as a result of the changes we made, that list is of higher quality and as important to us, and we told you this at the time, it's more transparent as to how that list is compiled. I mean, it's not a perfect list. There's no such thing as a perfect list but it is at least we now are able to point and say, this is why this person's in the list, or conversely, this is why they're not. So thank you very much for that. You were a, a real great to work with on that. Thank you, Mr. Holloman. Um, Ms. Greer, the Chief Justice's Commission on Professionalism. Hi, um, we will stand on our written report, but I do want to echo everyone in uh, thanking you, Chief, not only for your leadership as chair of the Chief Justice's Commission on Professionalism, uh, but for your work where I met you in a former life uh, with the Supreme Court's um, Committee on Justice for Children. That's where I first got to know you, and I appreciate your passion for uh, some of Georgia's most vulnerable children, so I want to thank you for your service and wish you well in your next season. Thank you, Ms. Greer. Um, the Council of Court Administrators, Mr. Weeks. Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's quite all right. Um, I wanted to share that we have just successfully had our first educational conference in two and a half years. We had that in March. We are making plans for our upcoming fall conference where Georgia Council of Court Administrators will be celebrating 25 years. And I just want to thank each and every one of you and your staff for your support of Georgia Council of Court Administrators because we would not be celebrating 25 years without each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Moore Nelson from the Institute of Continuing Judicial Education. Morning. Um, we will stand on our report. I just started working with you, Chief Justice Namias, three months ago. So I'm not prepared to say farewell. So I will say officially with witnesses uh, because ICJE believes in training and I know you do as well. So we look forward to seeing you at future conferences and being um, helping us possibly as a speaker or something like that. Good to help. Well, thank you. And, and we've had you on Zoom before, but welcome. Um, and I'm glad everyone can lay eyes on you. ICJE is really important 
to ensuring the competency and the integrity and ethics of judges in this state. And so we appreciate your leadership and I'm happy to help um, in that effort. Uh, Mr. Boring's not here for the JQC, but wanted me to share a couple things. Um, one is you have the JQC's annual report in your materials. Um, and secondly, uh, the JQC has a new website, um, or has updated its website, and uh, Mr. Boring wanted me to particularly thank the work of the AOC, which supported in the development of the new website. Um, I'll also note that uh, the Supreme Court now has a link on our website to publicly available uh, JQC documents. Actually, the biggest request we get for documents at our court is, is regarding JQC documents, and so uh, we have made those available in the interest of transparency. Is there any old or new business from anyone? We're going to uh, recognize some outgoing members who've served on the JQC, and I want to note with regard to almost all these uh, people that they have served for, most of them, for one or two years, almost all of which was pandemic time. And uh, many folks who, who are kind of moving toward the Judicial Council, I'm sorry, the, I didn't say JQC, the Judicial Council, many folks who are moving toward Judicial Council, you know, see it as a commitment of time, kind of form meetings here and there. Uh, for many of these folks, two years ago, I think we had 26 meetings, um, and, uh, and it's been an enormous effort, and we've really uh, relied on the Judicial Council of Georgia to provide guidance and in share information and receive information um, during the pandemic. So these folks really deserve uh, a lot of credit. And I'm going to ask you when I, we call out your name to come up here for a minute so we can present you a certificate and allow everyone to acknowledge your service. So first is Judge Wade Padgett. Then Judge Jeffrey Kite. Five minutes going to come up and accept for Al Wong, who is not able to be here today. And you're going to look a lot better than Al Wong would have. I'll make sure we get service. Judge Price. Judge Price. Hey, let me stand on my toes. <laughs> Judge Lakes. Judge Casper. Judge Casper. Judge Duff. And Miss Fight. And we don't have a certificate for Elizabeth because we've decided to keep her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all again for serving. Um, there's a special presentation. What the? Well, as many of you have acknowledged this morning, there is one more outgoing member, provided that there is not another emergency meeting between now and our <laughs> um, And And as if my math is correct, and it's not my math, it's Cynthia's math, so I'm pretty sure it is, 
this is the 50th meeting in which you have uh, uh, led as either chair or vice chair, and I am fairly confident that that is got to be some kind of record. Um, the, when you come on the court as a junior justice, you have no idea how much administrative and leadership work the senior justices of the court are responsible for. Um, and at no time has that been more true than the last two years. Uh, the service that then Justice Namius provided to the judicial system and the state before he moved into a leadership role was, was really very substantial between uh, the Rules Committee uh, for, for all the various classes of courts, as Mike Holloman had uh, acknowledged. Uh, he was very happy to hand that off to me uh, <laughs> not long after I came on the court, and I was then happy to hand it off to Justice McMillan. Um, but there's, there was a ton of work, and the court does an immense amount of work compared to our uh, equivalent courts across the country. A um, number of studies have shown we decide far more cases by written opinion than any other high court uh, in the country. Um, but the last couple of years, as, as the chief moved into the role of PJ, supporting Chief Justice Melton, uh, and then into the role of chief, has been unlike any that anybody who works for our court can remember. Um, and it has been, it's been essentially a second full-time job. Um, and it has been a second full-time job that has mattered as much as anything else we have done because the rule of law doesn't work if the courts stop. And Chief Justice Melton and then Presiding Justice and now Chief Justice Namias have been as committed to ensuring that the rule of law continues as anybody in the world. And that has been a critical service provided to the people of this state at a time like no other. All of you have, because of the rules you're in, have done the same. But it would not have worked without the leadership that you've provided and the work that you've done behind the scenes that nobody knows. Um, so, thank you. Uh, you know, those of you who used to watch our oral arguments, um, back when Chief Justice Harris Hines presided, we would, we would swear lawyers into the, the Supreme Court bar uh, every couple weeks, and we would take turns giving a speech to the new lawyers, and he would always, he had a go-to. He would like to talk about the delegation of people uh, who went to General Washington back in the day uh, to ask him to, to serve the new country. And they would say, General Washington, you, or the indispensable man. And then Chief Justice Hines would turn to all the lawyers, the, the, the newly admitted lawyers, and say, ladies and gentlemen, you are the indispensable men and women. And you have all been indispensable to this process. But Chief, there hadn't been anybody less, more indispensable than you. So thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, and I'm not going to say much more. That's all very kind remarks. Um, it, it has been a lot of work, but one of the great privileges of serving uh, for a long time on the Supreme Court is if you get to a position of leadership, you get to serve um, on the Judicial Council of Georgia, and uh, there is no better group of people in our judiciary and our legal profession. Um, and so for all of you and also folks who've come before you, um, yeah, that's been one of the real uh, privileges of being in this role, um, and I appreciate all the support and encouragement um, that you've given me, but also, most importantly, the work you've done for the people of our state. Um, so thank you. Um, we're going to, so i got to explain what happens next, because um, <laughs> it gets a little bit complicated. Um, one thing I'll note is the next uh, meeting of the Judicial Council, scheduled meeting, is a general session 
Friday, August 12th at 10 a.m. It's scheduled to be at the Classic Center in Athens. Nice. Um, and it will be uh, Justice Boggs' first meeting as Chief Justice with uh, Justice Peterson as the Vice Chair. Um, and then the meeting schedule for 2023 uh, is being worked on. It will be circulated sometime in the near future. So when we adjourn, which will happen in a couple minutes, um, people need to go two different places. If you're sitting at this table as a member, please come up um, here. And line up. And we're going to line up and take some pictures. If you are, are city, seating as a guest, and we have some people, I think, also out in the atrium, if you will go outside and Kathleen Joyner, our public information officer, and Emily Youngo, um, who's in the back, they will break you into two groups and take you on a tour of the building um, so you can see all the other spaces in the building. Then the people who are up here for pictures as members, Justice Peterson and I will break you all into a couple groups and lead you on tours and hopefully we won't run into each other um, too much as we go around the building. And then when you return down here, there'll be box lunches uh, out in the hall, which you are welcome to eat um, in the hall. There's actually, I think the terrace will be open. That's another feature you'll see. There's an outside terrace um, right outside this area, which is a beautiful space overlooking the Capitol um, or elsewhere. And then, uh, and then you're free to leave. You're actually free to leave now, but I encourage you. Um, <laughs> I encourage you to, uh, to take a tour, especially if you haven't seen the building, and the tours will also take you into non-public areas um, behind our courtroom and, and uh, my chambers and our uh, court bank room. So with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Appreciate all of your service. I hope you all remain friends and will cross paths in the future. If you're a member, again, come up here. If you're not a member, go out and join into one of the tour groups outside. Oh, and I get to... Yay! Yay.